Yeah, Ryan Pepio has been great, but don't you forget about Emmett Sheehan. Let's discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Thursday, September 28th. I am Frank Stample, joined by Scott White. And let's talk about Emmett Sheehan, who had a huge game in Coors Field. Six innings, two runs, 10 strikeouts to zero walks, 20 swinging strikes on 84 pitches. And Scott, we've talked a lot recently about Ryan Pepio and Michael King and Reese Olsen, young pitchers with upside for next season. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like Emmett Sheehan is working his way right into that mix. Yeah, because this wasn't an isolated incident. So... The 20 swinging strikes on 84 pitches, which you mentioned, that includes five on the fastball, eight on the slider, seven on the changeup. A really good distribution, getting swinging strikes at a high rate on three different pitches. It's the third time in a row he's had a breakdown like that. And during that three outing stretch, you know, most of them were on the shorter side, four innings or so. This one was six. But during those three outings, a 198 ERA, a .73 with 15.8 strikeouts per nine innings. So Emmett Sheehan just blowing up here late in the year. And no, how about Bobby Miller, Ryan Pepio, Emmett Sheehan, three Dodgers on a, in a span of two days because there was a doubleheader Tuesday, just lighting it up at Coors Field, no less. Uh, I'm going to call them the glob stoppers because I think <laughs> I think they are showing the upside to transcend the glob and are going to be pitchers I target within that large range of 60 or so pitchers next year. Speaking of transcending the glob, Grayson Rodriguez might have done that for next season. He had another solid start here on Wednesday, and his updated numbers since returning to the Orioles, he's made 13 starts, a 258 ERA, a 110 whip, just under a strikeout per inning, but gets a lot of swinging strikes. My thought is those can turn into strikeouts. Hopefully, uh, as soon as next season, he has the pedigree, Scott. What mm -hmm. are your thoughts on uh, Grayson Rodriguez transcending that glob for next year? I mean, they're complicated. We we went pretty deep on it in the full-length podcast, if you want to hear me hemming and hawing. I think he has a ton of upside. I think he's been great since returning. I agree the swinging strike rate suggests he should have more than 8.6K per nine that he does during that stretch. and So maybe that's reason to anticipate strikeout improvement next year. But if he is only an 8.6K per nine guy last year, I don't think we're going to see the same consistency from him because that's that's kind of the whole idea behind the glob is that if you're not missing bats at a high rate in this environment where BABIP is up because of the shift band and what and whatever else. Uh, you're you're leaving yourself too vulnerable to these outings where things spiral out of control and you end up giving up eight and runs. He's managed to avoid that since returning from the minors, but the strikeout rate has done him no favors. So um, I don't know. My heart is saying, yes, he's transcended the glob because I know what kind of pitcher he could be. But my head's kind of like, look at that strikeout rate. That's, you know, you're, you're, if you're going to be disciplined about this, you need to be disciplined about it because it's not quite enough. As with most things in life, Scott, I would tell you to follow your heart <laughs> and trust Grayson Rodriguez for we'll next see. year. Uh, let's wrap up here with Shane Bieber, who turned in a great start in his second outing back from the IL. Six innings, one run, seven strikeouts to zero walks. He's another tough pitcher to rank for next year. The strikeout rate is down this season. 10.4% swinging strike rate is a career low. His expected ERA entering Wednesday was 4.91. He has this lingering arm injury as well. <laughs> My initial reaction is, I don't want anything to do with Shane Bieber next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's... Kind of my feeling, too. It, it depends what the price tag ultimately is. We're going to keep sticking with the, the glob metaphor here. And it, he's he's Joe Glob right now. Like He is the epitome of a globby pitcher, uh, is, is what he's become. You know, The big drop in velocity happened last year, but he got by because the whiff rate was so good on the slider and curveball. Well, it hasn't been as good on them this year, and he's mixed in a cutter more, which has made him even less of a swing and miss pitch. And so he's just... 
he's just a boring innings eater now. And I don't have much hope for him to reverse that downward trend, even though he's only 28. So there will come a point where he's worth targeting uh, pretty much once all the upside targets within the glob are gone. But the fact I don't see Bieber as an upside target might prevent me from drafting him because somebody might just given his history. Last but not least, shout out to Ronald Acuna. It's been the year of Ronald Acuna creating the 40-70 club. 40 home runs and 70 stolen bases. A truly historic season there for Ronald Acuna. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we will be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye.